It appears we have the first coronavirus lawsuit. The Grand Princess cruise ship had left port in San Francisco on February 21st and spent a little over a week in Hawaii before it was to return to Ensenada, Mexico. But it was diverted back to San Francisco on March 4th after a California man from a previous trip tested positive for the virus. The ship sat in San Francisco Bay for most of the week. Passengers began being triaged and a few hundred were able to disembark into quarantine starting on Monday, March 9th. Approximately 2,000 passengers still remain on board. USA Today reports that many are confused and lack information about the disembarking and quarantine process. Two of those passengers have already filed a lawsuit against Princess demanding in excess of $1 million plus costs and interest and attorney's fees. Let's take a look at that now. This is a community-supported legal education channel. Find out how you can support our mission at the links in the description below. Now, YouTube doesn't appear to be allowing any coronavirus related videos to be monetized. So we have voluntarily demonetized this video and we thank our supporters for making this video possible. Please consider supporting this channel by visiting patreon.com slash ljfrench or sponsors.com slash law. Now back to our story. So here is the lawsuit brought in the United States District Court for the Central District of California why in the world would a lawsuit against a cruise ship be brought in California federal court? Well, the only reason I can think of is because of diversity jurisdiction. When you have two parties who are from different states or from a state and outside the United States, they might file in federal court if the amount in controversy exceeds $75,000. I already told you it's a $1 million lawsuit, so we've got that clear. So I think what we're going to see here is a diversity jurisdiction lawsuit. This is filed by Ronald Weisberger and Ava Weisberger against Princess Cruise Lines. And it was filed yesterday, March 9th. And it says, This is an action seeking damages in excess of $1 million, exclusive of interest costs and attorney's fees. That means they want that on top of the $1 million. This court has diversity subject matter jurisdiction pursuant to 28 U.S.C. 1332, as this is a civil action in which the matter in controversy exceeds the sum or value of $75,000. Just remember, that has to exceed $75,000, so a lawsuit for exactly $75,000 will not be enough to get you into federal court exclusive of interest and cost and is between citizens of different states and or citizens of a state and citizens of a foreign state. This court also has admiralty subject matter jurisdiction pursuant to 28 U.S.C. 1333, as this case involves a maritime tort. Now, what is a tort? A tort is a legal wrong under a whole category of legal wrongs called torts. Usually medical malpractice, personal injury, uh, those kinds of things fall under torts. The type of incident and injuries suffered by plaintiff had the potential to impact maritime commerce as plaintiffs are at serious risk of imminent harm as a result of being exposed to the coronavirus running rampant aboard the cruise ship upon which they are paying passengers. Ronald Weisberger is sui juris, which means of age and competent to file a lawsuit, and is a resident of Florida, as is Ava Weisberger. So we have Ronald and Ava Weisberger from Florida. Princess Cruise Lines is incorporated in Bermuda, has its headquarters in Santa Clarita, California. This action is being filed in this court pursuant to the terms and conditions of the passenger contract issued by Princess Cruise Lines. At all times here too, Princess owned and operated the cruise ship, the Grand Princess. This court has personal jurisdiction over Princess as Princess' principal place of business is located in Los Angeles County, Los Angeles. And so even though they're in San Francisco, we're in the Central District of California, which is Los Angeles. 
Princess conducts substantial business within the state of California, including operating cruises from ports in San Francisco, San Diego, and Los Angeles. Princess markets cruise vacations to California residents and employs thousands of California residents to work at its California headquarters. Plaintiffs are passengers aboard the Grand Princess, which departed February 21st and has been anchored off the coast of San Francisco since March 4th as a result of the COVID-19 outbreak. In the recent months, there has been a worldwide outbreak of a new strain of the coronavirus commonly known as COVID-19. The virus began in China in December 2019 and has quickly spread throughout Asia, Europe, and North America. The virus causes temperature, a dry cough, and can be fatal. There have been over 100,000 cases worldwide and over 3,000 deaths as a result of COVID-19. Those fatalities have largely been among the elderly population and those with underlying medical complications. COVID-19 really gained the attention of the public when the Diamond Princess cruise ship, also owned and operated by defendant, suffered an outbreak of the disease in February 2020 in Yokohama, Japan. The outbreak began with 10 cases and rapidly multiplied to 700 cases as a result of the flawed two-week quarantine on the ship. The Center for Disease Control issued a statement on February 18th that the rate of new reports of positives new on board, the Diamond Princess, especially among those without symptoms, highlights the high burden of infection on the ship and the potential for ongoing risk. Seven of defendants' passengers have died as a result. So that's the Diamond Princess. And so look at that date. That says February 18th is when uh, the Centers for Disease Control issued a statement, yet this uh, this new cruise on the Grand Princess departed on February 21st. It would only stand to reason that, having experienced such a traumatic outbreak on board one of its vessels less than a month prior to the current voyage on board the Grand Princess, that the defendant would have learned all the necessary precautions to take to keep its passengers, crew, and general public safe. Unfortunately, the defendant, Princess, did no such thing, which is why plaintiffs are now at actual risk of immediate physical injury proximately caused by defendants negligence. All right, so there's some keywords in there. Negligence is going to be the cause of action, and proximate cause is part of a negligence causation inquiry. You've got two types of causation, and both have to be found in negligence. The but-for cause, or the factual cause, is this wouldn't have happened if these facts didn't happen. So they got on the cruise ship, if they hadn't been on the cruise ship, they wouldn't have gotten sick on the cruise ship from the virus being on the cruise ship. A proximate cause is the legal recognition of that cause, and it's actually really complicated, and we're not going to quite go into the complicated inquiry here, but suffice to say that there is a line between the number of steps of cause. So if I take a hammer and I whack you in the head, I've proximately caused your injury, no doubt about that. But if I stop my car in the road for a cat and someone hits me from behind and the traffic gets backed up and you get stuck in the backed up traffic while the police are clearing the scene and getting traffic flowing again and you miss your interview for your job that you're about to get a great offer it's a life-changing offer it's the best job you've ever had but now you miss your interview and they aren't very willing to understand so they don't make you an offer and don't grant you a rescheduled interview do you have a cause of action even though you wouldn't have gotten stuck in traffic if it wasn't for me stopping for a cat and somebody smacking into me well maybe maybe the but for cause is the person who drove negligently and ran into the back of my car okay but we also have this thing called proximate cause where because the law doesn't recognize the three or four steps removed that you had an interview and you got stuck in traffic and the, and the, and the company didn't understand and they didn't offer you a job, 
That's too far removed. And this goes all the way back to a case with Mrs. Paul's graph, who was an, a lady who was standing on a train platform and some guy tried to get on the train with fireworks and the fireworks went off and it scared some animals and they ran into some equipment, sc like scales, like, like scales for measuring the weight of cargo. Uh, they ran into some scales and the scales tipped over and they injured Mrs. Paul's graph. So could Mrs. Paul's graph sue the Long Island Railroad as opposed to suing the person who brought fireworks on the train and caused the commotion? And the answer was no, no proximate cause. So someday maybe we'll go over the Long Island Railroad and Mrs. Paul's graph scenario. There are actually other videos on YouTube. Maybe I'll find one and post a, a bubble here for you. So they are alleging negligence, as I just said. Negligence is duty, injury, breach, and causation. Let's look for those four steps. Duty, that a duty was owed to the passengers, that there was a breach of that duty, that it caused an injury. Well, caused an injury. So princess owed plaintiffs who are paying passengers who boarded the grand princess on february 21st the duty to ensure that they would not be exposed to unreasonable risk of harm that defendant knew or should have known about while sailing on its vessel defendant breached its duty there we go in that it had knowledge it had actual knowledge that at least one of its passengers from the prior voyage who disembarked february 21st had symptoms of coronavirus yet it made the conscious decision to continue sailing the voyage that began on february 21st with another 3,000 passengers on an infected ship Specifically, defendant was aware of at least two passengers who disembarked its ship on February 21st in San Francisco who had symptoms of the coronavirus. It went as far as to send emails on Wednesday, February 25th to passengers who disembarked on February 21st, notifying them of the potential exposure to the coronavirus while on board their cruise. To make matters even worse, there are 62 passengers on board the plaintiff's cruise who were also on the prior voyage, therefore they've been exposed, who were exposed to the passengers that were confirmed to be infected and later died. Um, wow. In continuing to sail with another 3,000 passengers, including plaintiffs, on February 21st, knowing that some of those passengers and crew had already been exposed to COVID-19, the defendant princess had exposed plaintiff to actual risk of immediate physical injury. Defendant is further negligent in failing to have proper screening protocols for COVID-19 prior to boarding the passengers on plaintiff's voyage. Despite the knowledge and experience it had with the outbreak on the Diamond Princess just a mere three weeks prior to the instant case, defendant did not have proper screening protocol in place to minimize the risk of exposure of the disease to its passengers and crew. Prior to boarding the February 21st, 2020 sailing on the Grand Princess, passengers were simply asked to fill out a piece of paper confirming they were not sick. That seems a little bit lax. Not one passenger was questioned, let alone examined in any capacity. Incredibly, not one of those 62 passengers or crew members who were mixing and mingling with the infected prior passengers were ever examined during the instant voyage until being tested for the virus on Thursday, March 5th, two weeks after the ship sailed. You're starting to make a good point here. As a result of the defendant's lackadaisical approach to the safety of plaintiffs, its passengers and crew aboard the Grand Princess, plaintiffs are at actual risk of immediate physical injury. Finally, defendant princess is negligent in failing to adequately warn plaintiffs about the potential exposure to COVID-19 prior to boarding the ship on February 21st and again during the sailing of the cruise. Defendant had actual knowledge of at least two passengers who sailed on its ship the week prior, disembarked with symptoms of coronavirus, and one confirmed death as a result. Defendant also knew there were 62 passengers and crew who were on board the same sailing who now are on board with plaintiffs and failed to inform plaintiffs at any time prior to boarding or while they were already on board that there is an actual risk of exposure to COVID-19. In addition, Princess failed to inform plaintiffs that a crew member aboard their cruise actually disembarked as a result of the coronavirus in Hawaii. If plaintiff had knowledge 
of this actual risk of exposure prior to boarding, they would never have boarded the ship. Yeah, I wouldn't either. If plaintiffs had knowledge of this actual risk of exposure prior to boarding, they would have never boarded the ship. If they were informed of the risk on February 25th, when the former passengers were notified by email, plaintiffs would have disembarked at the first port of call in Honolulu on February 26th. Due to defendants' outright negligence in failing to warn plaintiffs of the actual risk of exposure to COVID-19 aboard its infected ship, plaintiffs are quarantined in their cabin along with the rest of the passengers and crew off the coast of San Francisco, anxiously awaiting their fate. And that does that does seem kind of unfair. I mean, you, you're on a cruise ship. You're supposed to be having a good time. The cruise does the cruise company doesn't take the precautions necessary, and so now you have a giant floating infected vessel. That's uh. That's terrible. And then these cabins are not the biggest cabins in the world. So now two people are quarantined in a cabin without the ability to leave their cabin. That sucks too. As a direct and proximate result of the aforementioned negligence of the defendant princess in exposing them to actual risk of immediate physical injury, plaintiffs are suffering from emotional distress, are traumatized from the fear of developing the virus as they sit minute after minute in their confined cabin on an infected vessel, and this emotional harm will continue to plague them. I'm, I'm not sure if negligence is the thing to argue for emotional distress, but definitely if they get infected or are harmed or, you know, being physically confined can be harming. So one thing I noticed there is that I, I didn't see a really good definition of the injury and causation, um, but that could also be something that's fleshed out in discovery in the lawsuit the discovery of relevant evidence as this proceeds. I'm sure we will see either a settlement from Princess or a motion to dismiss that this is not a completed negligence claim. But then there's a second count here, gross negligence, which is kind of just like negligence, but with an elevated level of knowledge that not just was the defendant basically negligent duty breach injury and cause but they actually had some sort of foreknowledge they knew or should have known or were willfully blind to a to a problem that would become a breach of their duty so they reallege the previous allegations and now they say defendant princess conduct in deciding to continue to sail the princess with plaintiffs, knowing that the ship was infected from two previous passengers who came down with symptoms of COVID-19 and had 62 passengers on board with plaintiffs who were previously exposed to the infected individuals, along with the prior crew, shows a lack of any care on the part of defendant amounting to gross negligence. Defendant knew how dangerous it was to expose plaintiffs and the rest of its passengers to COVID-19 in light of its experience with the Diamond Princess, a short three weeks prior, yet it departed from what a reasonably careful cruise line would do under the circumstances in continuing to sail with plaintiffs. Uh, what does that mean, a reasonably careful cruise line? Well, the, the standards for these types of negligence and torts and things are what would a reasonably prudent person do? Uh, and yes, in my in my opinion, a reasonably prudent cruise line would not have sailed their cruise ship after knowing that they had an infection. It's one thing to be sort of plot to have plausible deniability and say, well, we haven't seen any infections or any symptoms or anything yet, so we think we're safe. But now they actually had a case, actually two cases, and then there were 62 people who were still on board, plus the crew were exposed. So. That's a, that's a lot of exposure to overlook. Moreover, defendants' conduct in failing to warn plaintiffs of their actual risk of harm in being exposed to COVID-19, either prior to boarding or while they were already on board, in light of the prior passenger who came down with symptoms who ended up dying, along with others who came down with symptoms from that prior voyage, and the crew member who disembarked during the voyage from the virus amounts to an extreme departure of what a reasonably careful cruise line would do, in light of the fact that plaintiffs are elderly with underlying medical conditions. Defendant Princess chose to place profits over the safety of its passengers. 
crew, and the general public in continuing to operate business as usual despite their knowledge of the actual risk of injury to plaintiffs who are elderly with underlying medical conditions. Wherefore, plaintiffs demand judgment against Princess, including punitive damages suffered as a result of the gross negligence on defendant and a trial by jury on all issues so triable. And so that has been filed as of Monday. And that's really interesting. Um, I think we'll see more of this against any entity that doesn't take reasonably prudent precautions against the virus. Uh, and it's very sad. I'm not here to try and talk about the virus. In fact, as I said before, we're pretty sure that YouTube doesn't really want me or anyone else to talk about the virus as that's not uh, ad friendly. But this is what I do. I bring lawsuit news to you. And this is a lawsuit that was just filed. And I thought you would be interested in seeing what the what I, I think it's the first I tried to search. There supposedly was a lawsuit against the CDC, but then I couldn't actually find anything about that lawsuit. So maybe that's the first and this is the second. Maybe there are more and I don't know about it. But this is among the first at least civil lawsuits against uh, in this case, the cruise line for not acting as a reasonably prudent cruise line should in taking precautions to prevent the spread of the virus to its passengers on a self-contained cruise vessel. So let me know what you think of that in the comments below. Thank you very much to those of you who provide financial support for this channel. Remember, this video is demonetized, and so we could really use any donation you can afford to make so that we can continue to make these videos for you. Feel free to join us on patreon.com slash ljfrench or sponsus.com slash law. For the month of March, I'd like to thank the following $50 plus supporters by name. Wes Delge, Aspernari, Video Remonetized, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Kyle Mudrock, Michael Pierce, Spirit Bear, Jan Negre, Daniel Perez, Blackleaf, Joe Tyson, Benjamin Hightoff, Stephen, Ada, Cute Grills in Your Area, Longreach Jones, Zachary Cheney, Mullen PC, and Anders Thorenfeldt. And the $5 plus supporters will be crawling on the screen in front of me, and all of those people will be in our description of our videos. Thank you very much for your support. I love you all. I'll see you in the next video. I'm Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. Bye.